Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I hope everybody had a very safe and uh, happy uh, July 4th weekend. And I am delighted to be interviewing a uh, native New Yorker. I can't say fellow New Yorker anymore, but Eric Holtz, head coach of Team Israel. And we are so delighted that Eric, you were able to give us a half hour before you get ready to uh, start the process. It's going to take you to the, uh, I guess, are we calling it the 2020 or the 2021 Olympics? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Good morning, and thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, they're still referring to them as the 2020 Olympics. That's pretty cool, you know. So, listen, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but we, we I got to know a little bit more about, you know, Eric Colts. I, I, you know, I spent as much time as I could on Wikipedia. Um, uh, I will, I listen, I'll be for the first one to say, okay, Irish guy here, not as 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 up to date on the uh, on the Jewish faith as I thought it was. So I'm reading your your Wikipedia, and uh, you know it says that the, you had your bar mitzvah um, at the Western Wall. So I thought that was going to be like a re restaurant in Westchester. Boy, was I wrong! <laughs> I'd heard of it called the Wailing Wall. I'd never heard of it called the Western Wall. I was like, that's pretty cool. I'm like, so I was expecting it to be, you know, it's like, so I was like, wow, that's that that's pretty special. You know, so listen, I got to ask you, I, you grew up, grew up in, in New York, in the Bronx. You are a Yankee fan. I am. Okay. So you are 56, am I right? 55. I'll be 56 this year. Yes, sir. Okay. So you're, so you're like, you're like four years older than I am. So I was trying to think, okay, so, so you, you know, you grew up really, you know, when you, in your formative years with the really bad, the Horace Clark guys, stuff like that. I mean, my memories um, are more positive than that, Sean. I choose to, to remember uh, the good teams, uh, the Chris Chambliss, Willie Randolph, Bucky Dent, Craig Nettles, Mickey Rivers, Roy White, um, you know, uh, Goose Gossage, Sparky. I, you know, the, I, I choose to kind of go no, back. No, no, no. Let me, let me rephrase that. You, what I'm going to say is you didn't get to see – you, I, obviously, of course, you were, you know, the, the teams in the 90s, but when you were, you know, so so let's just say in the mid 80s when, you know, you you were, you, all your friends, you were being annoyed by the 86 Mets and all, all that, how good Correct. that was. Now, you were a third baseman, so who was your favorite Yankee growing up? Nettles? Um, you know, I, I really never had a, a, a favorite guy. I, I, yeah, I, I, I like to kind of model my, my playoff Nettles. Um, chippy guy uh he would just grind and and uh kind of fiery you know and i, I in in a time where they weren't that good he was kind of like the uh the unofficial leader of that team and uh yeah i liked him a lot i also like brooks brooks robinson and uh you know some other guys as well but um yeah born and raised in the bronx um to be real honest with you sean religion has not played a big part in my life ever um i'm not a big religion guy at all i'm not a big political guy I make the, uh, hey, listen, I, I makes two of us. I, uh, I truly believe um, on treating people the right way, uh, no matter where you come from and where you're going and where you've been, um, you know, respect everybody's everything. And uh, that's kind of how I grew up. My father died uh, when I was 11 years old. Um, so out of respect to him, I think my mom... Um, felt like she wanted to um, go through the entire process of the bar mitzvah and, and, and stuff for my dad. Um, so we did, you know, and that was my first uh, time going to Israel. It was kind of cool, uh, you know, as a, a 12 and a half, 13 year old kid, I don't know that I appreciated uh, what Israel was back then. And, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough uh, to have a second and third and fourth chance. And, and now I've been there, you know, eight, 10 times. And uh, it's kind of become like a, you know, a second home before uh, COVID. Pretty cool. So before we get into Eric Holtz, I got to ask you a question. So Eric Holtz, the Yankee fan. Yeah, I want you to put your manager's hat on. Can you save the Yankees? The 2021 season? I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, Sean, uh, as anyone that loves and studies the game of baseball, when things are working, life is easy. When things aren't working, you got to kind of revamp, retool, and relook. So um, I do love the, the fact that they're starting to at least look like they're trying to make more contact now and, and get away from all the launch angle and home runs. That, that 
hasn't been working. Uh, I'd love to see a little bit more old school uh, bunting, moving runners over, hitting behind runners and, and creating uh, something where there's nothing rather than waiting for the three run home run, which is what the Yankees have done for the last 10 years. Um, the Aaron again, Weaver scenario. I, well, you know, it works. Here's the problem with baseball. You don't get paid to bunt. You don't get paid to hit and run. And the whole game has changed. And, and the analytics piece where parts of it are real good for baseball, it's also hurt baseball. And, and, and in a lot of ways, I don't think there's, there's any looking back on that. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I think it's a pendulum, you know, and whatever. And it's got swung too far in front of analytics and it's got to swing back. But my fear is that when it swings back towards scouting and what scouts mean, the sad part is that there won't be any scouts. That's John, that's, that's, John, that's a great point. And let me just harp on that. You know, uh, you mentioned that we're close in age. I was down scouting the USA tournament uh, in Florida. And uh, it used to be, you know, you'd show up and you'd see these guys that look like Clint Eastwood, you know, the big bucket hats. And those guys don't really exist anymore. You know, they're the dinosaurs. There may be a couple of them left here and there. It's all the young guys on their iPads. And, and, and I wonder, I truly wonder how many of them you know, played the game and understand the game or have just gone to school to yeah. be a scout. You know what I mean? And, and that's the part that when I'm referred to as an old school manager, and I've been referred that way plenty of times, um, you still got to play this game. You still got to execute, you know, so all the computers in the world can't play the game for you. Yeah. I mean, that's the sad part is I, I've, you know, down here, obviously, um, well, I mean, Take, for example, when, when the uh, Blue Jays were playing in Dunedin, which is literally three miles from where I'm sitting right now. So I was lucky enough to get to a couple of those games. And, uh, you know, I would look over to see what where the scouts technically should be. And uh, two of the three games I was there, there was nobody. And the third game, two scouts. I mean, two scouts at a major league game. So that means no guys advancing, you know, I mean, it's... And then I happened to be at a minor league game, the Clearwater Treasures the other night, and I ran into a good friend of mine, Salah Dostanelli, who's with the uh, Phillies. Phillies had, and Terry Ryan was there. Okay. The former GM. And that was it. There was those two guys. And yes, there were two young kids with their iPads. That was it. I mean, the thing is, most of the teams, I know, I know, I know from talking to people at the major league level that they're going to tell you, look, we can get so much stuff off the TV games from in the point of view of, you know, advanced scouting. But the thing is, these are human beings playing the game. They don't realize that by not sending the scout, they don't realize that, you know, the third baseman and the shortstop are, are at odds and they don't like each other or the first baseman just broke up with the girlfriend or the center fielder's wife's expecting and, you know, and how all those things affect people. Sure. You know, so so a nice nice way of, of, of not answering the question about how you would change the Yankees, but <laughs> we'll have that conversation off the air because I have, you know, I mean, listen, I have the utmost respect for the Yankees and, and that, but I think I just, for me personally, I think it's a poorly constructed roster. And while I actually like Stanton, I kind of feel bad because I, I kind of feel Stanton gets treated the same way era does. Most people hate Stanton, and the main reason why they hate him is because he signed that big contract, you know, but. So uh, I mean, we can talk about this right now. We can talk about it off the air. I'll do whatever you want to do. But I, I, I agree with you. Here's the thing about New York, Sean. You know this as much as anyone. New York expects results. If you're getting that kind of money, they need you to play. And they need you to put up numbers. They need you to, to, to earn what you're getting. Um, you know, you never had that issue with a guy like Derek Jeter. Uh, but you did have it with you know, a guy that was traded for late in the year and, and uh, late in their career, like an A-Rod, you did, because they expected a whole lot of this guy. And, you know, from most of his time with the Yankees, it just wasn't there. One difference, I'll though. Tell you, One I'll difference. tell you who I think does a great job. I think the Tampa Bay Rays are the, the greatest team in baseball when it comes to analytics, getting the most out of the least. And here they are you know, right at the top of the, uh, you know, uh, American League East, and they got a payroll that might be 20% of the Yankees. And you know what? That I, I take my hat off to them because they do it every year. This hasn't been one time. This has been historic now. 
yeah. I, I mean, I'm lucky enough to know, know a lot of the guys over there and Eric Neander. Their, their baseball ops department is the best in baseball. Department. And here's the best example of that. They're the defending American League champions, right? You know, they came within, you know, two games of one in the World Series. They have one all-star, Mike Zanino. Just proves that it's the, the sum of the parts, you know? And they get rid so of the uh, you know, and they go, well, hey, they know when to get rid. I mean, listen, that, that you know, everyone wants to talk. I mean, that, that trade with 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 uh, Archer, greatest trade ever, and they have Archer back now. You know, right. but, uh, right. you know, they know when to get rid of these guys, and and you know, I mean, I, the, if before he got hurt, I think Glasnow would have been next. But listen, let's let's get back to the the the, the important stuff, Eric Holtz. So you go to Dean College. What did you study? Wow. Okay. So I studied phys ed. Um, I thought I wanted to be a teacher and um, I went for two years. Uh, and again, after my dad passed, uh, my mom was a, I guess you would call it kind of a teacher's assistant. Um, I think my mom made about $18,000 a year and, and raised my brother and I on that. Wow. And after two years of school, I said, man, you know, do I want to do I want to do this and, and, and come out? And, you know, that's what I thought of when I saw, you know, education and my mom. And so after two years, I said, I've had enough and uh, went out and got my first job. Which was? I was a salesman in the garment industry uh, in New York City for 25 years. I, I uh, uh, started out in sales. I, I then became a VP of sales. Uh, I then opened my own company and, uh, um, I was a manufacturer and importer of women's clothing. So I will, I will uh, defer from using the joke about you spending 25 years on women's clothing. I mean, you can, I, I listen, there were times and, and, uh, I, I got three wonderful kids and, and, and I'd always get invited to like, you know, uh, bring your dad to school day and, and, and talk about your dad and here in Valhalla, you know, which is a great community. There'd be kids go, oh, here, my, my, my dad's a, a fireman and my dad's a policeman and my dad. Does, and then and then my daughter would say, my 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 dad makes women's dresses. <laughs> 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 so we always had a lot of fun with that. But you always had, you know, the, 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 the coaching bug, you know, um, you know, you, you, you quite, so. so so when you went to, 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 to coach at Manhattanville, was that full-time or part-time or what? Was no, that? no, everything's been part-time in my life. Um, I had the coaching bug. Again, I, I hate to keep going back to this. When my dad passed, baseball was our bond, our common bond. Um, and um, it, was, it was some wonderful, positive Little League coaches in my life that kind of kept me um, – um, on the straight and narrow. They made sure that, you know, I was going to be okay. And, uh, you know, they kind of made me part of their families and took me on vacations and stuff like that. Um, so baseball is always just an incredibly positive thing for me. Um, when I, um, I got the bug back again, um, probably when my son, who's now 28 and a half, uh, started T-ball here in, in, in Valhalla, New York. And uh, I was watching the way a couple things were being done. And um, I remember coming home and complaining to my wife and saying, you know, I can't believe the way this guy's talking to these little kids and, you know, whatever. And my wife looked at me and, and we've been married for almost 30 years. Uh, August will be 30 years. And she said, babe, either shut up or do something about it. And, and, and that was it. You know, I, 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 I got sucked in um, from the get go. Uh, I, I was coaching uh, real little kids. I was on the board of, um, of directors for Kentucky Little League with John's dad uh, for, for, for many years. Um, and, and one thing led to the other. And, and uh, you know, this uh, gentleman at, at Manhattanville College asked me if I would, you know, be interested in, and, and, you know, I just took to it right away. It was wonderful. You know, I, I got to impact kids. I, I, I love hitting. I love um, uh, the life lessons that come with baseball on a daily basis, Sean, um, you know, the overcoming failure, how you deal with failure, uh, being part of something bigger than yourself and, and, and not having an ego 
uh, because it's what's best for the team, not, not what's best for me. Um, and before you knew it, you know, it just kind of took off. Then what happened was my older son um, got um, an offer to go play at Bucknell University. Uh, he was a pitcher, um, pretty big guy. And, uh, and, and, and it was at that point, I kind of stepped away from Manhattanville because uh, I wanted to see my, my, my kids play. Then I got sucked into uh, coaching part-time at Westchester Community College when I wasn't watching my son. Then my daughter went on to uh, pitch at NYU and my younger son just graduated Columbia, played baseball at Columbia and is now in the for, for a, a good buddy of mine, the, the coach at uh, Columbia. Rep Ready. Rep Ready, one of, the, one of the greatest baseball names. And you know what, I, one, of the, one of the best coaches that, I mean, could without a doubt go on and, and, and coach at much bigger programs, but great there, guy. There's no question. And, and one of the reasons we chose Columbia is he was, um, my son's name is Brett as well. So uh, my Brett and I kind of looked at him like me, you know, like he's a, he's an incredibly positive, good energy, uh, passionate guy. And um, so I kind of stepped away from coaching college so that I could follow my kid's journey. It meant so much to me uh, to be able to watch them. My son graduated Columbia and he's playing uh, pro ball in the Czech Republic right now. Um, he left in April and um, I, I, I stole a, a long weekend in, in, uh, in May and I got to fly out there to go see him play. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how it, 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 it happened. And um, yeah, I mean, and, 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 and here we are, you know, it's, it's many years later and, and I pitch myself because uh, I get to do what I love every day, Sean, and, and, and impact youth and, and help them uh, create and achieve realistic goals for each individual athlete that I work with. And I just feel blessed to be able to do that. Okay. So we, you know, I have a lot more questions to ask you. I do have a favor to ask you. Could, will, will, will you come back to, and talk to us after the Olympics and tell us, explain to you what, what an, an experience that was? I'll tell you this. I will be back on August 10th latest. You name the date. And, and, and it'd be my pleasure to come back. Okay. So, so what, what, I want, what I'd like to do. So first of all, you played in Israel. So, I'm, 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 so chronologically, so that was in 07. No. <laughs> We're going to need much more time than a half hour, Sean. What I'm trying to get to is I, I'm I, to get to I, how you got to be the head I coach. Of the, I here. So here's, here's, here's the, 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 the timeline. I get drafted as a 41 year old player coach. I get to spend 10 and a half weeks in Israel in 2007. They put me with Ron Bloomberg because they knew Bloomy was only going to be there for about four days. And then the team was going to be mine. Um, we go wire to wire. We win the championship in Israel. And long story short, I, I, I really, you know, hadn't, gone back to Israel in six years. And, and my buddy, who's kind of like a, a, a little brother to me, Nate Fish. Um, I met him, was, Nate spent the photos. Nate, 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 Nate is something else. Nate um, calls me up and says, hey, Holtz, do you want to come with me to Israel and, and be my assistant coach uh, for Maccabi USA? I said, sure, what is Maccabi USA? So he tells me it's like the Jewish Olympics. Every four years, they have teams that go uh, back to uh, Israel and they compete in a whole bunch of sports. I said, man, that's great. I I I'd love to do it. Uh, so I go back for three weeks in 2013. We win the gold medal. Uh, by the time I leave the country, uh, they asked me if I'd stay on and be the head coach for the next one in 2017. Um, I said, absolutely, I'd love to do it. That's when Peter Kurz called me in about 2016. He heard I was coming back to uh, Israel to coach Maccabi USA. He asked me for uh, a meeting in the city uh, one morning when he was here for business. Um, the conversation kind of went like this. I'd like you to uh, take over our national team. I said, what does that mean? Uh, he explained it to me and he said, well, 
if we do this, 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 and this, we have a shot to go to the Olympics. And I looked at him, I go, oh, is that all? Yeah, no problem, I'm in. So, so Team USA wins a gold medal on Tuesday. Wednesday, I become the head coach of Team Israel. I have a week to train these kids. And we go to Serbia. And uh, we come in second place uh, in, in Serbia. Uh, we just kind of ran out of pitching there. And uh, it was my first time coaching Israel. And, and that was in the B pool. And we go back to Israel. I have like a day or two to kind of decompress before I'm coming back home after being away for six weeks. And Peter said, listen, you know, I'm asking you now. The guys want you back. Will you come back in 2019? Lucky for me, I said, absolutely. And then something special happened. Israel makes this incredible run in the World Baseball Classic under Jerry Weinstein. And about 10 of the guys on the World Baseball Classic team decide that, yeah, they, they, they'd like to be part of this. They'd like to, 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 to see if they could be part of this Olympic run. And Peter talks to them about what it would take as far as, you know, gaining citizenship. You know, you, you have to have a passport. You have yeah. to be a citizen of, of that country. And without hesitation, every one of these guys said yes. Um, it's a long process. You know, it's not like Israel's just handing out passports. Um, it, it, it's, it's months of paperwork and background checks and the FBI and, and, and you know, and Israel's government. And, um, you know, in 2017, we go to Bulgaria. Um, we go 6-0 and in Bulgaria. Um, we then go to Lithuania. We, we beat Lithuania the first two games. And then I got really lucky, you know, there's a, a bunch of guys that join us at that point in Germany that I hadn't had before, you know, a guy like Danny Valencia, you know, and, yeah. and, and Ty Kelly. Ty Kelly, and, the Irish guy. Yeah, you stole the Irish guy. I stole the I, Irish guy who's half Jewish. Ty Kelly, well, you know, we'll, we'll fight about him another day. But I was like, holy shit. I'm like, here, here we are trying to get an Irish team together. Really? And you've got a guy called Kelly on the Israeli team? I was like, I love it. I love it. I love it. And, uh, you know, so, so, you know, the, the stars aligned just perfectly and, uh, you know, and the moon came out and, 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 and here we are, you know, other than Japan, we were the first team to uh, clinch a spot to the Olympics. So basically you're, 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 you're getting ready to start. When do you leave for Tokyo? So uh, the players arrive here tomorrow. Um, we will play nine games in 11 days in the Northeast. Uh, kind of to get the guys back together, get the band back together. And then so this we'll is the whole team. This is the guys that have come from Israel. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the whole team because the guys that are affiliated guys will not be released by um, their teams or the MLB until we leave for Tokyo. So there's about six or seven guys that will not be with us in the Northeast but we'll meet us at the airport or we'll meet us in Tokyo and we leave for Tokyo on the 21st of July. Awesome. Well, listen, we are going to be uh, speaking for me anyway. I'm going to be uh, rooting hard for you guys. Last thing before we go, because you, you like me tend to move a lot during an interview. There's a sign behind your head. I need to know what it says because I've seen bits of it every time you move. It seems like a quote or something. Can you see it? I can see it now. I, li I like it. Eric, I wish you nothing but the best of Irish luck. Um, I hope that uh, I hope that it's a tr I know it's going to be a tremendous experience because I want to know what it's like with the opening ceremony and the, you know, the, the Olympic Village and all that other stuff, you know, and I, I, we, ne we didn't get to talk about Game on 13, which we will do in part two. I wish you nothing but the best of success. Have a blast. Soak it up. And I look forward, hopefully, maybe in four years' time, where basically maybe Team Ireland can play Team Israel. I look forward to it as well. I, Sean, I, I feel like I could spend hours talking to both of you guys. And uh, we will pick up where we left off in August, and I look forward to it. Awesome. Thanks for get, taking the time, and best of luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care. Bye, man.